Hey loves, welcome. We're here to share loving vibrations and to encourage oneness. We shall deeply discuss about frequency, quantum physics, loving vibrations, energy, law of attraction. We hope you will share the love and spread it too. There is a very special kind of human being who may be termed a believer. Now the believer, he or she, has the remarkable power to sweep everything before them. This does not mean, of course, that they won't have their share of trouble in this life. Nobody ever escapes difficulty. And they, along with everybody else, have to experience it. They shed their tears, they have their pain, they experience their sorrows, but they never stay knocked down. They come on back up by a marvelous inner thrust of uh, resurgence. And they go on and on. They are the undefeatable of this life. They are the practitioners of a very great spiritual principle. If you can believe, nothing will be impossible unto you. That doesn't mean you can attain everything you want, but that nothing is out of the area of the impossible. Recently, as I stated once before, I was in Australia making speeches to what they called uh, Congress uh, 78. These were put together in several cities of Australia by a sales motivational organization. And they had two speakers from the United States of which I happen to be one, and two speakers from Australia. And uh, they packed uh, three of the biggest halls in Australia for these very enthusiastic, motivational, positive mental attitude meetings. There was one man who brought 60 of his salespeople to one of these meetings. And this was rather remarkable because the price of the ticket was $56. An astounding amount of money to hear anybody make a speech. But when you figured out four speakers, it wasn't all that big. <laughs> the expenses, I suppose, were considerable, but the promoter is always the one who uh, comes off best in the end. At any rate, I was interested in why this man brought 60 salesmen at a cost to himself of uh, around $3,300. And I asked him why. He said, because I've got 60 young men and young women wake working for me, and I believe that they have potential, so I'm bringing them to these meetings to make believers of them. Well, I thought the phrase was rather interesting and a bit strange, and I said, believers in what? Why, he said, any, any fool knows what they should believe in. Well, I said, this fool doesn't, so please tell me. You want to make believers of them, is that right? And he said, yes, I want to make them to be believers in God and believers in the good. And I wanted to make them to be believers in our business and believers in our country and believers in life itself. And I want them to believe in themselves. And he said, the pity is 
that only a few of them really are what you might call believers. When I asked about the history of this man, I was told that he'd come up from indescribable adversity because he himself was a believer, an individual who is undefeatable. Now, you've come this morning to the center of the belief principle. Not that this marble collegiate church is that, but any church is, because in any church, if you hear the gospel and if you hear the Bible read, you'll come onto the principle that if you can believe, nothing, nothing, the word is nothing shall be impossible unto you. So maybe you're sitting out here this morning defeated by something. You think you can't make it. You think it has you down. You feel uh, licked. Well, the answer to that is thrust your faith down more deeply into your consciousness until you get past the doubt as to whether you can believe, and you become a, de a believer. And uh, you'll gain that victory. Now you see, miracles happen to the believer because when a person becomes a real believer in God and uh, in the world and in himself, he begins to release something that's uh, very great inside of him. I stand here today looking out at a great congregation of people. And I wish every one of you could come up here and see what I see. I see something very beautiful. I see something very exciting. I see God's children out in front of me. I see intelligent faces. I can see the light in your eye. I can see the personality behind that vis visage known as your countenance. And I realize that every one of you was brought into this world by Almighty God. You were created by Him. And He brought you into the world through the physical process of birth. And even though your mother gave birth to you, she was only his agent. He gave birth to you. And he put into you a great deal of himself. You, therefore, are what Tolstoy once said of Lincoln. You are Christ in miniature. That is to say, you have within yourself an enormous potential. Have you ever realized it? Have you ever brought it in the full flower? Do you believe that what you are today is all that you can be? You're illimitable. So you've got to be a believer in the good God who created you and in you yourself. I sat in the apartment of a man and his wife in Sydney, Australia. I guess it was three weeks ago today. In the afternoon, after church. They're on a place called Darling Point which is the most uh, desirable building location, I understand, in the harbor of Sydney. And I'm told that the Sydney Harbor is one of the most beautiful in the world, even more so perhaps than San Francisco or Hong Kong. And from their windows, you can see the passage through which by which Captain Cook passed long ago because Cook didn't enter the harbor. Remained for a later explorer to do it. You can see the opera house built like a sailing ship about to take off. 
You see the glorious bridge at which they're so proud. You see all the sailing vessels. And I remembered the first time I ever met this man. It was a number of years ago when I was in Australia speaking to the International Rotary Convention. And he said he wanted to have an interview. And he came around and he told me, he said, you're looking at a very ordinary man who has a very ordinary brain. Well, I said, you don't look all that bad to me. He said, but you're also looking at a man who gave this ordinary personality and this ordinary brain to Jesus Christ and uh, the Lord uh, made something out of it. Now he said my father had some money, not a great deal, but enough to put me into private schools and he said I failed in the first one, I failed in the second one, I failed in the third one. And by that time my father got tired of trying to educate me because I didn't have any brain. So he took me out of school, made me go to work, and I got one job, and I lost it. I got another job, and I was fired. I got another job, and I had to quit, and I got another job. And I wasn't any good at all. And I began to become very discouraged with myself, and he said my father was completely fed up on me. So he said about that time I got a job, very humble job, sweeping out really, for the National Cash Register Company in Australia. And uh, pretty soon I saw the same Simpsons. I was going to fail again on this job. Then a man came out from Dayton, the headquarters of this company, and he got all the employees together and he made us a speech. He told me the name of the man, not a minister, a layman. He said the man leaned on something up in front of these employees and he looked them all over until there was a death-like silence. And he said, there's somebody here who doesn't think he mounts to anything. There are many here who are not what they could be. Now, he said, I've come out here way out from the United States to tell you something. And that is, you are a child of the good God. And he put something great into you. And if you will let God bring it out of you, you can become anything you want to be. Well, my friend listened to that. And he said in that instant, I believed it. And I got to believing in myself. So I went down to the office the next morning and I passed the manager's office and he was sitting in there and I knew he was getting along in years and he would retire in a couple of years. So I said to myself, I'm going to take his chair. I'm going to sit in that seat. I'm going to be the manager of this company for New South Wales. That was the state in which they lived. So he said he knew that in order to do that, he must go to work. So he studied. He gave himself to it. He gave all of himself to it. He began to be respected. He began to respect himself. And three years later, when this man retired, he was made manager for New South Wales. And he happened to go into the main office. And he saw a man sitting in the chair, manager for the whole of Australia. He said, uh, I'm going to sit in his chair. <laughs> he went to work. He believed in himself. He, he followed the dictates of the Lord Jesus. He became manager for Australia. Then he became head of another great big organization, which he built up himself, Walton's Stores of Australia. Perhaps the greatest mercantile 
chain of stores in all of the subcontinent of Australia. So the other afternoon, sitting there with him, I said, Bert, you're a remarkable man. Now, nah, he said, I'm an ordinary man with an ordinary brain. But he said I was just wise enough to put myself in the hands of the Lord. And I told him to do anything with me that he wanted to do. Well, he must be very highly thought of because Queen Elizabeth knighted him as Sir John Walton. Isn't life romantic? Isn't it absolutely terrific? So if you're sitting here today discouraged with yourself, and you say to yourself, you're an ordinary person with an ordinary mind and ordinary ability, you are not telling yourself the truth. If you can just believe Nothing is impossible unto you. Now, I believe this, and I'll preach this till the day I can't talk anymore because I have an enormous respect for what people are and what they can become. And every time I make a speech I'm like this, I'm talking to myself, too, because I've never, I've never achieved it yet. But believe me, so help me. I'm going to... One of these days. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> Wonderful miracles are possible if you believe. Now, why are they possible? Well, one thing is, when, when you become a believer, you become excited. Are you excited? Well, don't tell me you're not excited. When you become a believer, you become absolutely, uh, have a sense that life is fabulous. You become enthusiastic. And as you become enthusiastic, the old desultoriness falls away. The old dullness falls away. You be begin to have sensitivity and awareness. You are, have a grasp on life and a perception in it that you didn't have before. And wonderful things begin to flow out of your personality because having become a believer, you become an excited, dynamic individual. And they are the people who produce. They're the people who are creative. They are the people who become innovative. They are the human beings who get things done in this world. Get excited. Now, recently, on this trip around the world that my wife and I made, we worked for eight hard days in Hong Kong on establishing a branch of Guidepost magazine. We worked from 8 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. And when we left Hong Kong, we said what we need is a rest. So we were headed for Singapore. I said, as far as I know, there's nobody in Singapore knows us. And as far as I can remember, I don't know a soul in Singapore. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go down to Singapore. We'll do nothing for three days. We'll check into the hotel. We'll sit around. We'll sleep late. We'll eat meals in the restaurants. We'll walk around. We'll do absolutely nothing. And uh, I even added, for my wife's benefit, we'll visit some of the shops, <laughs> which shows my great generosity of spirit. Well, we checked into a hotel, and it so happened that the, the manager of the hotel had read one of my books. So he had, he had his publicity department, and they had a press conference all set up. So Ms. Peel and I had a press conference, and this paper came out the next morning with a pretty big story. And uh, I was still asleep at 6.30 a.m. When the telephone rang by my bed, and sleepily I answered it, and uh, a voice in English, but with a local Chinese inflection said, uh, 
Is this Dr. Peel? I said, yeah, this is Dr. Peel. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, I said, okay, I'm for that, but... I said, do you realize you just awakened me? Oh, he said, we must be awake and doing things. And I said, who are you? And he gave me his name. He said, I am a disciple of uh, all motivational thinking. And he said, I'm a Christian. And I just learned that you were in town. How long are you going to be here? I said, three days, three nights. Oh, he says, isn't that great? We'll get up a big meeting and have you make a speech. I said, I came here to make no speeches, to do nothing but visit the stores and buy my wife's merchandise. Goodbye, see you. <laughs> but he wouldn't let me go. And he was so enthusiastic that by this time I was wide awake. And I said, OK, when do you want to have the meeting? And they set up a time for the meeting two nights hence. And to my astonishment, he had a great big ballroom filled with people. Now, the population of Singapore is about 90% Chinese. And these were seemingly all young people. Hardly ever in my life have I been in an audience where enthusiasm and excitement so washed up on me like a wave washes on the shore. I was absolutely captivated by these people. I was excited. And we'd agreed that I would give a 15-minute speech, and at 45 minutes, I was still going strong. <laughs> and they were still there, too. <laughs> so we had a luncheon or a dinner or something, and we began to talk about why was this spirit of excitement among these people. And it finally came out that every one of them was a believer. In what? In God. In their great city of Singapore. In the businesses of which they were a part. And they were leaders in business, already young in life. They were right up in the scale. And they, every last one of them, believed in himself or herself. And I went out of Singapore riding on air. And my wife and I agreed that the principle is so valid. If you can believe, yeah, you can believe if you try hard. If you surrender your life to Christ, you can believe. Not a, not a pseudo-believer. Not, not a superficial believer, but an in-depth believer. If you can believe in God, in Jesus, in yourself, and in other people, nothing will be impossible. Well, that's a Christian religion. It goes all out. You might call it the end of the limb religion. It believes that nothing is too great to be true. Nothing is too big to happen. When you're a believer, then you release power. Now, Christianity is not any dull life with little old intellectual, uh, bookish kind of a cloistered kind of a thing. It is power. Ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. How much power have you got? <clears throat> when you get up against the difficulties of life, how much power can you produce? Well, the producer, the believer produces plenty. I was speaking at a dinner the other night in a Midwestern city and sat alongside a very famous businessman who just come back from Washington where he was representing his industry nationally and as we sat together he said to me you believe in the power and I looked at him and I said yeah I believe in the power 
He said, how much do you believe in the power? I said, I believe in it a great deal. He said, do you preach the power? I said, yes, I, I believe I do. Well, he said, the trouble with so many churches is they don't preach any power. Now, he said, I had an elbow which was severely injured. The tendons were badly bruised. I had terrible pain night and day. Took all kinds of medication, went to all kinds of doctors, had every kind of treatment imaginable. Couldn't stop it. Then I was reading in the Bible where it says, if you can believe, nothing is impossible. And he said, now look, I'm a scientific man, trained scientifically with scientific engineering degree. But when I read that, I said, this is a reliable book. I'll practice it on my elbow. So I said, I put my elbow in the hands of the man who made it and asked him to fix it up for me. I said, what happened? Well, he said, what happened? What do you suppose? I had faith. I invoked the power. My elbow was well. Now he said, don't ask me about the people who do the same thing and it wouldn't happen. He said, I don't know anything about that. I only know that it happened to me. And he turned around full from the table and looked me straight in the eye. He said, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. And that's a fact. If you can believe, and you can, Nothing shall be impossible unto you. I believe this. I know many of you believe it. Let's all believe it, for it's true. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the incredible, astounding, wonderful philosophy of religion that you've given to us. Nothing little, it's big, huge, vast. Help us to be big enough to take it to take it all and to incorporate it into our lives for the power. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.